Well, you may have noticed I didn't get a video posted this past weekend. Apologize for that. But um, tonight I'm going to tackle something people have been asking me about here. And that is different ways to breed. And there's no wrong way, I guess, to breed. It all depends on what your purpose is. If you just want pretty chickens to run around your farm, you got it the easiest out of everybody. You just put a rooster with your hens and off you go. It helps if you know genetics because then you can get more colors out, but that's besides the point. But the more complicated you want to be about things and the more you want to rely on your own breeding, then you kind of got to buckle down and keep records and that kind of thing. So at the top here we've got pair mating. That's as simple as it gets. It's one rooster, one hen. It doesn't matter if it's a old cock or a cockerel or a pullet or a hen. Whatever. Same breed, different breed. Doesn't matter. Then you have a trio, which is a male and two females. And that's how my Morgan started off. One male, two females, which I then pair mated. So some people... When we're talking trios, they'll just do one male to two females all in the same pen. I don't like to do that because even though the two hens, for all you know, even if they're complete sisters, one may produce superior offspring than the other. And you're not going to know unless you have them in their own pens or some way of identifying who laid what egg. Some people use trap nests for this. Uh, if I did that, my birds would be locked in a nest all day with no food and water, so I don't do that. But if you're the type of person who can go out and check it multiple times a day, that's great. And just do colored leg bands on your hens for the breeding season. When the hen comes out of the nest, you know, when you release her, you can just mark it on the egg that which hen it was, and off you go. Group mating. I use this term for any time you're using one male over more than two hens. And I know guys who are showmen who have bloodlines that are very uniform, and they can get away with six to ten hens to one rooster and still have really good results. Then we have what we call flock mating. This is your barnyard mating. You got more than one rooster running the place and multiple hens. Um, game file circles, you might call this your yard hatch, where you've got hens running loose and they're mating with whatever roosters on the tie cords and you have no idea who's producing what. But again, it's all depending on what you want to accomplish. Now, what is inbreeding? Well, that's when you take two individuals that are related and breed them together. Um, most people tell you don't mate brother to sister together. You can. If you do, I'd only do it once in a blue moon, absolute last resort. Most of the time, you're going to be more likely to be doing son to mother, daughter to father, niece to uncle, granddaughter, grandfather, grandmother, grandson etc etc you are basically trying to lock in traits from an older bird within breeding and that kind of ties into the next one which is line breeding which is breeding two related individuals usually distant with a set purpose so again let's say you've got let's say rooster 83 is the best one you've got and you want to breed to him as long as you can. So you breed his daughter to him. Next year you breed his granddaughter to him. Next year great granddaughter. And eventually you produce a new rooster that's better than him. Or maybe a daughter that's better than him. And then you start back breeding to her every year. Breed one of her offspring back to her. And what you're doing is you're locking in traits from that bird. And making the gene pool more uniform. Artificial insemination, I may be trying this with some of my birds this spring, 
really don't want to, but it's kind of a last resort with this one particular rooster. And it's exactly what it uh, sounds like. You're mating them artificially. You have to collect the uh, semen from the rooster and manually apply it to the hen. Had a guy show me how to do it. I haven't tried it yet. Not going to try it yet. Eventually, if I do, I'll, and I get it to work, I'll make a video. Now, the next thing here I got listed is rotational mating. And there's two ways you can go about this. First one ties back into pair mating. It's moving a single male over multiple hens in a pair setting. So, if a hen is bred by rooster, she can produce fertilized eggs for multiple days in a row. I've had some people tell me as long as the rooster covers a hen once every seven days, and other people tell me once every three days. A little bit of variance, I'm sure it has something to do with the breeds and their metabolism, etc., etc. But anyway, what you can do with this is it allows you to pair mate, and it kind of ties back into line breeding too. Let's say you got that exceptional rooster, and you've got oh, 10 granddaughters of his that just look like peas in a pod, and you're thinking, man, this might be the last year I can raise this anything off this rooster. I'm going to go for broke. Well, here's what you do. You put each one of those females in her own pen, and then you go get that rooster every night once he's gone to roost for the night and move him to the next pen over. And just keep repeating this on a rotation. It should keep all the hens fertilized. Now rotational style number two is to take multiple males, and this kind of goes back to flock mating or group mating. If all you're doing is trying to get numbers out, and you've got a pretty uniform bloodline, or you're just looking for egg layers or whatever, this is a good way to go also. You keep three, four roosters on hand, and let one run with the hens for half the week, pull him, put him back in solitary, grab the next rooster, throw him out there. What that does is it keeps their desire to mate high, and they're more likely to cover more hens and um, should keep your fertility fairly high by doing that. The problem is you won't know what roosters are producing what offspring. And here's two terms that get thrown around a lot, especially in the game foul circles. Um, Crossbreeding. So when you're crossing two breeds. And I see this all the time with game fowl people. They're like, oh, well, I got this crossbred rooster. He's half hatch. He's half roundhead. Well, that's not a cross. It's, it's not a crossbreed, I should say. Because hatch and roundhead are both bloodlines within one breed. Okay, so it is a cross, and back in the day they would call that a battle cross, but you can't call them that anymore for obvious reasons. So, what it is, is it's just simply a cross or a cross blood, not cross breed. And hybridizing, that's another one. Uh, you'll say, oh, I'm, I'm going to hybridize, it's a Peruvian hybrid. Well, no, it's not. Peruvian is a breed... American Game Files breed, so that would be a cross breed. Hybridizing is when you cross a chicken to a pheasant or a guinea to a peacock. It's two species that are on the same part of the evolutionary tree that are related and can mate just like a horse and a donkey or a Muscovy duck and a mallard duck, but the offspring are usually sterile. Interesting side note, I knew a guy who hybridized, on accident, golden pheasants with prairie chickens. Alright, so that should give you an idea there. 
and that kind of goes into back here into crossbreeding is infusing. Now infusing and the next one grading are kind of related. So infusing, let's say what you're doing here is you want to get longer legs on your birds. You like everything else about them, but the judge says their legs are too short. Okay. So you find a bloodline that has a lot of the same traits as yours, plus the long legs. At this point, you have two options. You can get rid of your old bloodline, since this bloodline is similar in all regards, and just go without the new bloodline and hope that it is as good as what you had, or you can infuse it. And infusing is a series of matings till you get the desired effect. You might stop at half and half. It might be three quarters. It might be five sixteenths, etc., etc. Just whenever you get to where you feel it's comfortable. And it's giving you the result you want. Now grading, this comes into talk a lot with orientals. Which goes back to actually those are crossbred because... Azeals, Shamos, Ties are their own breeds. So grading, I call it infusing with a focus on creating a certain working percentage. And the reason I think grading is different than infusing is infusing is kind of a matter of personal taste. While grading seems to be fairly predictable depending on the purity of your base stock. So you get the three quarters American game, one quarter a zeal. Pretty good chance it's going to look and act just like somebody else's three quarter American game, one quarter a zeal. Whereas infusing, that would be like breeding one sixteenth blood blue face hatch into a bloodline of sweater grays. Okay. Now here's one that I haven't dealt with myself too much, but when you think about it, it kind of makes sense for what we're doing also. It's called clan mating. And I see this applied more to people who breed in flocks, but it kind of is true for game pal people. And basically what you're doing is you're making multiple family groups. And what I usually see the example being is you have group A, group B, and group C. That's your initial groups. Well, next time you go to breed, you take your best young male from A and you breed them over group B. And the best one from B you mate to group C, and the best one from group C, you breed to group A. Okay? And then you just kind of repeat that process over and over. So it's always kind of... The idea is to keep the groups heavy in the influence of one particular group of individuals, but always freshening the gene pool up with a related individual from the other families. So it would be like, uh, well, basically, if somebody were to import um, a brown Swiss bull from Switzerland to the U.S. to use in their dairy herd. Okay, that's kind of the same concept. It's the same, you know, where every couple of years you buy another stud from a horse ranch, the same horse ranch over and over again to use in your breeding program. Might not even be the same pedigree, but it's from the same herd, you know. And that's that's what I gather the concept of clan mating is. Um... The nice thing about clan mating and and uh, family mating is it allows you, if you have enough room and enough restraint to keep with limited numbers of bloodlines, 
it allows you to build up a large enough genetic pool within a singular bloodline that you can keep it going for decades without having to add anything from anybody else's farm. And that's what I was trying to do with my Morgans. Unfortunately, um, I feel I've reached a point where I'm going to have to put in some new blood due to the fact that I just haven't raised enough. And when you don't raise enough, you sometimes get stuck with breeding what's left as opposed to what you were wanting to breed. And I'll talk about that in another video. But I hope this uh, helps to clarify a little bit about how to set up your breeding programs and gives you something to think about tonight. So have a good